So it's time to wrap this bad boy up with a bow on it again. Thank you for checking us out here on the YouTubes. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Why? Because sharing is caring. So the way we're going to get this bad boy growing is with you, the people. Also, leave a comment. Let us know what you think because you probably hate something we said. and That's fine. Something that's you the said. beauty of sports. No, you they as well. love me. <laughs> Your kind, you people. Well, we'll say by love, I mean they hate me less than they hate you. I don't. When I, when think I read the that's comments, possible. when I read the comments on our YouTube, they I don't hate, think that's possible. They hate me more. Actually, no, you're right. They actually do hate me more, and I'm fine with that. It I, might just be Tennessee, which they shouldn't, because you're a Vols fan. So it's just. And I went to a Titans game. And he went to a Titans game. Yeah, we just to tell y'all know this. Titans fans hate me, but anyway. <laughs> Let's move on into the finale. Let's talk college football. Uh, being Oklahomans and um, putting out the ridiculous prediction that the Oklahoma Sooners were going to vow for a national championship. We got to witness the Oklahoma Sooners play against the Nebraska Cornhuskers on the anniversary of the game of the century from mm-hmm. 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Skip Bayless actually wrote an article about that uh, for Fox Sports. And he kind of outlined watching being at that game or something like that. He's that old? He's old. God, Did not man. realize it. He's yeah. a vampire. That's what it is. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> like, I think he's like 115 years old, something like that. Yep. But anyway, on the eve of the anniversary of the game of the century, the uh, yeah, 50 year anniversary, it's 1971. Good Lord. Well, if you think about it, 71, that's that's not that far away. Fair enough. About it. But anyway, he's in college at Vanderbilt. But anyway, beer mustache bull. Oklahoma went out there and they won this game 23 to 16. They were favored 21 and a half points. <laughs> 21 and a half points. Mm-hmm. And they won the game by seven. Now, we did get one highlight out of this game, which may have been the interception of the century oh. by DJ Graham, which is ridiculous. He caught oh. it one handed, he tucked, rolled midair, and landed on his back with the ball cradled <sighs> like a baby, like, a lo- like it was just safely held. I was totally impressed with that. But the Sooners let Nebraska, with Scott Frost's team, actually keep up with them. Spencer Rattler looked like the Spencer Rattler we expected. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised he did not get a turnover, but even (laughs) though he was trying to turn the ball over. Mm -hmm. um, Jimmy, is it time to hit the panic button for the Sooners? Jay, I hit the panic button two weeks ago (laughs) against Tulane. You really did. <laughs> I, I, really guess I, did. I guess I got to do it again. Do it again. Yes. <laughs> yes. You see, and, I, and I figured out why. The All reason right. why is with any team that is expected to compete for a championship, you have to – there has to be something about you that teams fear. Yeah. Right? It can be uh, It can be a player. It can be scheme. Something about you has to be feared by the other team because that way you walk into every game with a mental advantage, and then once it's the true. team gets down by a few points, then they mail it in. Morale is gone. They're, oh, this is going to happen anyway. We knew it. So, yeah, the problem with OU, as far as I see it, I know there are a lot of problems with OU, and, you know, other people have, I guess, maybe more nuanced perspective, but just from what I've seen, they don't have any players that instill fear in the opposition. Like, even Spencer Rattler, we know he's good. We know he could potentially be the number one pick, but the same type of fear that K1 or Baker or even Hurts would instill in the opposition and beat them before the game even started, he just doesn't have that. Because part of what they expect, part of what the defense expects, is for him to gift them at least two turnovers, right? That instills confidence. That instills excitement. You know, they're they're talking about who's going to have the turnover chain once we turn him over. That's what that is. (laughs) So they don't instill fear. And you see this in the NFL, too. One thing that I noticed, I'll mention Bill Belichick here, is – Whenever they win a championship and they have that ceremony and they wreck the stage and all that, he always gives it up to the players first. Right. And the reason why he does that is because he knows that no matter what level of coaching you're at, no matter no matter what, no matter what your scheme is, if you don't have the players, if you don't have players that – and I'm not saying that OU players are bad or anything like that – but as far as, again, going back to fear, if you don't have players that really instill fear in the opposition at that time, it's going to be harder for you to win. You can win, but you're not going to win by 30 and 40 points like we expected this team to do. So it goes to show you that this version of the team, as far as the players, may not be quite what we're used to with what we've seen over the last five to seven years and right. beyond that. So I see those two things combined as being a big part of the reason why Nebraska came into this game believing that they could win and staying in it and I didn't see it towards the end, but did they have a chance to actually? Okay, so they had a chance to win the game. That's what this was. In my well, Brad's walked into this game thinking they was going to win this game. There you go. And this is the funny part. You say 
that there's nothing about the OU team that that puts fear into you the, the, as soon as you get there. Currently. Before. Currently. Nebraska is so bad. <laughs> they got like four straight false starts against a defensive front at OU that's not intimidating. Yeah, they started the game off getting false starts. Now, they ended the game with only eight, eight penalties, 70 yards. But, no, real talk. They they literally kept getting false starts. I'm just like, what are you afraid of? <laughs> Why are you jumping? Where's the discipline here? This is going to get Frosty fired. This is, right. should be the game that gets the man fired because they could have won this game against the number three team in the country mm-hmm. and propelled themselves mm-hmm. uh, back into, I guess, something. I don't know. Respectability? Yeah, there you go. We say respectability because of that Illinois loss that they took. And, yeah, anyway – Nebraska, that's how bad they were. They just, they, they had opportunities to do this. Oklahoma is just, they like I said, I don't know what it is about the last 20 years of Oklahoma coaching where it doesn't feel like we ever can put the gas down and just blow certain teams out that we need to just blow out the water. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't happen. And this is one of those games where you're a 21 and a half point favorite. Mm-hmm. They, this score should be 63 to 16, mm. not 23 to 16. They should have, there was no big plays, really. Nothing that just jumps out like, oh, the, the best thing we got was DJ Graham getting that interception, which, to be honest, was actually a really bad interception. <laughs> like, you should not have intercepted the ball at that point uh-huh. because when he intercepted that ball, it was fourth down. Instead of, oh, you getting the ball at like the 20 something, they got it at the two. Mm-hmm. And then they had to punt it. And Nebraska had a chance to win the game mm-hmm. <laughs> or tie, at least tie the game. So it took away from the flair of that by getting an interception at the wrong time. This this game doesn't make sense. Be, look, OU had 194 yards on the ground, 5.5 yard average, right? So you, you control in the run. You control time of possession. You control the flow of the game. 30, Nebraska, 20, yeah. 38 carries, 95 yards, 2.5 yards a carry. How were they in this game if they got dominated in the run? Martinez out there just – Throwing dimes. Uh, yep. 19 to 25, 289. I see. Dropping dimes, dropping dimes. <laughs> Baby Dane Dollar. Right. He's out there just dropping dimes, dog. Oh. It's bad. It's so like every then, play he completed, I'm just like, why is he open? So then a big part of the issue is is in the secondary. I mean, despite this fantastic interception that we saw, a big part of the issue is in the secondary. Well, they were missing two corners. So okay. I'll I'll say that. Okay. Um their two starting corners were out, and so that that could throw things off, but at the same time. Nebraska's booty. Mm-hmm. And they've shown us. <laughs> Frosty has been really bad at Nebraska. Okay, so let me make an excuse for OU. Let's say that. No, you know what no excuses are, right? They're what? tools of incompetence used by monuments and nothing. Else. Those who specialize in using them sell them out to anything. anything. Yeah. Excuses, big brother. Yeah. Excuses. We don't give them excuses. <laughs> There's no excuse for this. They should have blown them out. And this, like I said, it, it, the biggest thing is what worries me is now we're starting to get into the meat of the schedule. We're starting to Big 12 mm-hmm. play. Yeah. What is Oklahoma going to look like? Let me give you these, let me give you these games. And I want you to tell me what you feel co- your confidence level in these next to the games. You ready? Mm-hmm. West Virginia coming to the house. They won't be intimidated. Traveling to Kansas State, who's number 25 in the country right Definitely now. Definitely undefeated. Not, will not be intimidated. They, they love playing OU. Red River shootout. Uh, I don't know what Texas looks like. I know they put in, was it Casey Thompson? Who has has local ties in a sense? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what they look like. I was actually trying to watch that game, and it was on the Longhorn Network. But did they win? I hope so. Okay, well, um, but Texas. I mean, they always get up for the game, and that's part of what I was getting ready to just say, as far as the excuse. Like, yeah, Texas won. On, they won. That okay, game. on one hand, you know that when OU's on the schedule, that's like a Super Bowl for most of these teams. So they're going to get their best game. They're going to get the best game plan. They're going to get the best effort from those players. And I know what you're saying, but even despite that, OU is supposed to be so good that none of that matters. They should, exactly. they should be so used to that that, that none of that matters. That is the problem. That should not have mattered. OU should have destroyed mm-hmm. Nebraska right. in that game. And so we didn't get that. And so that's just, that's just four. And then you've got TCU coming to the house. Gary's Gary's always got <laughs> Oklahoma's number. He's uh-huh. known for it. But then he traveled to Kansas, which I don't even think they're a real football okay. team. So, then, so what they need to do is they need to smash the living hell out of West Virginia. At night, 6.30 p.m. on ABC. To send a you, message. You've got to send a message. If you yeah. don't send a message in this game. Message is going to get sent to you. Yep.